Motorcycle Adventure Dirt Bike TV is proudly supported by Adventure Spec in England, Rally Raid Products, Giant Loop in the United States, and Adventure Moto in Australia. In 2008, 15 Australian journalists were invited to New Zealand by Yamaha Australia to test a new release small capacity trail bike, the WR250R. With confidence in their product, Yamaha chose the rugged central Otago district of the South Island of New Zealand for the launch of their new model. Over three days and a thousand kilometres, the bikes were subjected to the extremes of this environment. Deep river crossings, challenging hill climbs, harsh rocky surfaces. It was an unforgiving landscape. Those that were present say the journalists thrashed those little bikes to within an inch of their lives. They were merciless. At the end of the three day ride, and despite their atrocious treatment, not a spanner had been laid on any of the bikes. It was at that time Yamaha realised they had something special. They discovered the bike was really well suited to Australian and New Zealand conditions, and it had reached way beyond its humble beginnings as a bike designed for the domestic Japanese market as a day tourer. Those journalists walked away with a lasting impression of a tough little bike that took everything they threw at it. For a modest price, the bike came with the advanced features of fuel injection, excellent handling and good suspension, but most impressively a bulletproof engine that loved being thrashed that had a 10,000 km service interval. Fast forward to 2014 and Greg Yeager of RideADV.com.au accidentally discovered the bike's potential as a reliable adventure mount. In collaboration with Yamaha, Adventure Moto and Technic Suspension, the Ride ADV crew have constantly refined and improved the adventure capability of this little bike. Since that time, the word has now spread and the little 250 is developing quite a following that was celebrated at Cessnock in May 2017 with the inaugural WR250R and X rally. Yes. Everybody looking? They're looking. Who's that running around the back? What's going on Tom? Oh there you go, Jaeger. We're at the WR250R rally, the first one. And I have to say it's quite uplifting to be amongst a group of people who have this kind of passion and love their bikes so much. It doesn't really matter whether you're a WR250R fan or not, the atmosphere is quite uplifting. Righto, good morning everybody. Welcome this morning. Uh, I just want to go through a riders briefing and I want to go through the corner man system. There are some obstacles today in the ride. Some of them uh, may be challenging, some may not. There'll be plenty of people on board to help in the challenging section. The challenging section is a very low speed section, so at worst you're going to fall on your side, okay? That's, that's the worst of it. So we're going to move like that. Now, who here has never ridden a corner man ride? They're coming. The WRs are coming. With a heap of first time adventurers in the Yamaha WR250R and X Rally, day one was seen as a sampler with a combination of trails designed to test out skills. Easier go rounds were always provided for the more challenging parts of the course. But this ride was very much about enjoyment for all skill levels. A mixture of single and double trail, a little black top, some mud and the odd erosion mound jump kept the riders entertained and on their toes for the day. An easy cruise back to Cessnock in bright sunshine and ready and locked and loaded for day two.
The mountains of Yengo National Park in the background gave a strong hint that day two would be more adventure oriented. The first timers had proved themselves on day one and we were heading to the Yango Trail. For many, their first real taste of adventure. Underneath those helmets and jackets were a very diverse bunch of adventure riders. From motocross and enduro legends and sand racers to first timers. There were more women on this ride than anyone had ever seen and our oldest rider was 82 and our youngest 17. These riders share the common bond and passion for this little bike that has so much to offer for adventure. When the current trend for bigger, more power, more accessories is dominating the adventure scene, this gathering of like-minded riders who recognised the WR250 was right for them was refreshing. It has proven itself as being accessible to all and at a third of the price of big adventure bikes, the burden of worrying about damaging the bike on the trails is lifted. For many riders, with the racks loaded with gear, their well-loved bikes had taken them all over Australia, from Cape York to the Simpson Desert to the Victorian high country. And one rider had taken his bike to the Himalayas in India and through Southeast Asia before returning home. From humble beginnings in 2008, the little 250 is steadily gaining a solid reputation as a capable and affordable adventure mount and a worthy alternative that challenges the current trend that bigger is better. The sweeps are in, so everyone's home safe. Time, and your work is done. Okay. Your job is done. Okay, I'm Sean Goldhawk, Communications Manager for Yamaha Motor Australia, and we're here to ride the WR250R. the most blinged up it's certainly got the most stickers it's certainly got a lot of stickers hasn't it and the other thing is that because it's such a small bike and uh, really easy to handle it suits a really wide variety of riders so we've got like a guy who's 82 years old rides once a week he's really fit he's got a WR250R slightly short as well so he's lowered the suspension on his one we've got a whole host of girls riding today normally Keep it a secret, but the girls have found out our secret and they're coming on the ride and the WR250R is the bike that suits them just fine. Okay, so it was actually designed as a domestic market, Japanese market trail bike, like a weekender for people in Japan just to have fun, you know, short distance sort of hops. But what we found is after that launch in New Zealand, it's really well suited to Australian New Zealand conditions. And a lot of people are just like lightly modifying them with large tanks and uh, maybe a little bit of a suspension tweak and going really hard over here in Australia. How's this WR250R going? Loving it. Yeah? It's great. Because <laughs> you're a mountain biker by trade, aren't you? Yes, that's right. Yeah. How are you uh, converting? I'm converted, um, but no, I love it. It's, um, the handling is similar, but um, there's a little bit more power in this one. 
<laughs> it's a lead ride, I know, yeah. Well, I, I bought my bike uh, about two years ago, yep. uh, 2009 model. Um, got it quite cheap, about three grand, three and a half grand. And it was bog stock when I got it. Uh, it had an FMF pipe on it, which I changed to a GYTR. Um, put the power box header. Uh, got lots of bling bits on it, like brake levers, foot pegs, carbon fibre, uh, rear mast cylinder guard and disc guard. I've got a full set of States MX uh, wheels on it in blue, so they're a heavier duty rim than standard. Plus they look pretty cool. Um, I just recently put a 290 kit in it, so it's a big ball, um, ah. which makes a really big difference to the aggression of the motor. Um, you can really get in on those big, big right hand, left hand turns and slide it all the way through the corner, just on the power. Um, I've got the 18 litre IMS tank, uh, GPR steering dampener, uh, run a 276. CX GPS. All oh, right, yeah. Looks like a large television screen. It is virtually an iPad, yeah. Um, yeah, the screen, uh, and although I have a, a friend of mine who thinks it's quite ugly, I run the headlight protector as well. Um, <laughs> which seems to do the job. I haven't lost one yet, so. Um, but yeah, and I've, the only thing I've got to do now really is put a power commander on it to um, to sort out the fueling on the 290 kit, so it's 100%. Right, mm. and uh, and. And Technics have done your suspension? Yeah, full Technic suspension job on it too, which is yeah. one of those things, you know, you don't really see it from the outside, but it makes a massive difference <laughs> Doesn't to the make a difference. Chalk and cheese. No, I know. I, I keep saying to people now, you've got to get your suspension done, yeah. you know. You know, I think it was $800 to $1,000 or something to get it done, but, you know, you just can't put a price on how much it changes the motorbike. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Mm. Excuse me, can someone find my bike? I've, I've got a Yamaha 250 here. I, I just don't know where it is. Find the right bike. <laughs> um, but if you're looking for something really small, I've got one over here for you. Oh, do you? Yeah. <laughs> it's all set up for uh, short legs. Is it? Yeah. Well, well, you'll have to show me it. Yeah, look, Technics did a really good job um, of the bike. This one here. Lowered it just perfectly so I don't even need a lowering link. So if there's any girls out there that are five foot one and uh, looking for a Yamaha to fit, get Technics and uh, these bikes are perfect. Yeah, we've tried Technic suspension, it's always a cracker, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's great, Katrina. Matt Philpot from uh, Barkbusters. Mate, this is your first time at a WR250R, isn't it? Yeah, first one of the time I've ever ridden one. I've got to say, I'm pretty impressed. The thing handles beautifully, it's got plenty of power. Well, enough to get the thing moving, so it's all good. Yeah, mate, it's a cracker, isn't it? I can't get over it, it's such a versatile bike. You just wanted a special moment with Steve in the bushes. You just wanted to say, Steve, come into the bushes with me. Come and lie down with me. This is PG-rated, girls. Oh, well, it's okay then. It's okay. Safety modification made demand so I can touch the ground. Has it? Yeah. Ah. Got the seat myself. So Brian, I've, I've got to say this respectfully, mate. You are the oldest trail bike rider I've ever met. Really? Yeah. What are you cracking? What? How old are you? I'll be 82 in a couple of couple in July. Mate, you're an inspiration. I hope I'm going at 82. Yeah. So, um, how have you set up your WR? Oh well, we just lowered it. Uh, uh, handlebars, raised the handlebars, slid the, uh, the forks up, lowering kit at the back, dropped the seat. 30 odd mil, uh, just so I can touch the ground. Yeah. Uh, and I've got it beautiful now. But I've also got a, uh, this, this is my R, I've also got an F model that I ride in the bush. So. Uh, and Chris Chris was saying you got a bit of motorcycling history? Oh, I used to own this joint. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, wow. I started, I started uh, Honda off in this town. Wow. Here. Gee. Yeah. Oh, well, Chris has built on it then. It's great, isn't it? Yes, he did. Yeah. It went, went, uh, I moved away from here down into the main street. I became the uh, on the motor car agent and I stood away from the bikes, but I took the bikes down the main street from here. And then a few years later, Chris came in and bought this joint and kicked it off from here. So. And uh, Brian, you've done some motorcycle competition in your life? Oh, yeah, well, I raced, uh, raced at the Royal for a few years at the wow. Speedway. Yes. And, and down here at Geraldry Park. At well, Brian, um, nice to meet you, mate. Okay. That was excellent. Probably everywhere we go today, I've probably been. <laughs> How old are you, Brian? 80, going 82. 82. How long have you had your 250 for? Um, 
um, about 12 months, just over. Yeah, and how have, you, how have you found it? Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I love it. I've always wanted a trail bike, so and riding the heavy Tenere around, this thing is um, like a little skateboard, really. <laughs> you notice everyone, uh, they're riding around, they're all smiling. I know, it's, just... it's good times, I tell you. Good trails, no rain, so no one doing rain yet, or anything like it. You can help it. No, you like. <laughs> <laughs> so Lockie, I've just spoken to uh, Brian over there, he's uh, riding bikes, he's 82, so that's not bad going, I've got a few more years in me yet. Yeah. So you're about the youngest rider here, so what do you got and what, what setup have you got? Well, I got the Yamaha WR250R, um, setup we have is the um, bigger tank for the extra fuel, um, the screen just for the extra bit of wind protection. Um, for, as a sweep, I've got to carry extra fuel and tools. So I've got a five litre rotor pack and I've got a pump and tubes on the other side for breakdowns, so flat tyres and stuff. Um, we have the concept seat for actually padding on your bum for the long rides. Um, makes it comfortable and yeah, just a good ride. Um, the rack, I don't have anything on it at the moment. Just normally I'll put tools in the rack. And, yeah. That's good. Oh, you got different bars. I was just looking at. Yeah, I got the um, Pro Taper Contour Window Mid Bends. Um, just my choice of bars. Um, more comfortable for me. There's a higher bend. Um, just makes it easier for when I stand up. I'm not, I'm not slouching or anything, and just a more comfortable ride. No, uh, less fatigue. So. Beautiful, mate. Thank you. So with the modifications, um, the big tank. We've got knobby tyres obviously fitted to combat this terrain. A rack is a good idea. Um, this particular bike's got a seat concepts bike. And as you can see here, Raid the Himalaya, Himalaya. This bike's been to the Himalayas and uh, the fuel injected engine can cope with the uh, altitudes of up to 5,300 metres. So this bike is a very well travelled example. Other things that riders do is fit a aluminium bash plate for added protection and maybe a wider foot peg as well for increased grip and security. Oh, yeah. My name's Ian, yeah, I've, I've had this bike since August uh, last year Yeah. and uh, I haven't done very much to it other than a few bags and things. I've done about 8,000 k's on it and it's awesome. Have you done any adventures on it? Uh, I have, I did a sort of a bit of a, a trek at uh, Christmas time up through the sort of northern, northeast New South Wales from sort of Sydney all the way up through Walker to Inverell, across to Grafton, and then sort of back down through Dorigo and taking in all the scenic routes. Oh, wow. And, um, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, so you haven't got much. You've got a tank bag uh, that I can see there now. Yeah, I've got a, one of the uh, um, giant GL, loops. Um, loop bags, giant loop bags to go on the yeah, back. Yeah, great basin, the one that goes uh, right across, like uh, a horseshoe. Yep, it just goes over the top, I can. Yeah, yeah. Um, and pretty much that, I do carry, if I'm doing long distances, I do carry an extra fuel uh, fuel bag. Yeah. Just to, uh, until I get a bigger tank. Yeah. Yeah. And you got your ram mount for your GPS. Yeah, that works pretty well. Well, that's more for the phone, that one, the GPS, <laughs> since we're not using it today, I've, uh, I've left that off. And you've got a USB charger. Yep. And you've kept it really simple. Pretty much. There's a few mods to the air box, just taking the, the normal things that you do on these, but outside of that, it's... Uh, and your gear lever, you've... Yeah, changed the gear levers. They're a little bit short for big-footed people like people. me, so yeah. just made it a bit, about 15 mil longer makes a big difference. Yeah, I can see your big feet under the under the bash plate there. <laughs> yep, that's about it. That's pretty much it, yeah. I've got a bit of bracketry under the guard just to support the uh, oh, yeah. fender bag there. So the bracketry. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, shots everywhere. Ah, oh, he's got his bark busters. Got our bark busters. And a little screen. Yeah, I made some brackets up for myself just to being taller, just to get the air back off my chest. Yes. So there's some custom made extensions there just to lift the screen up a bit. No, oh, that's good. Yeah, you gotta have it just to get go.
Mez, running on South Australian time? Sure am. I'm uh, it's all still right. got another 10 minutes actually, so when everyone's ready, I'm ready to go, so <laughs> no dramas here. You know, the 250 community are, are really generous people. You, you think so? <laughs> yeah. I think they're slightly unforgiving if you ask me. <laughs> anyway, pretty tame actually. I was expecting all sorts of stuff, but... No, nah, they're loving you. Yeah, no, it's Sunday, so everyone's a bit... Anyone who comes from South Australia to come on a ride with us, you deserve generous applause. <laughs> well, thanks, yeah. It's a bit of an effort, but, you know, I, I'll do anything for attention, so... Ah, it's good. What about your bike? Oh, I love it. It's just, yeah? it's, it's perfect for me. It's not too heavy, but it's sort of got enough power and... Yeah, I feel like I can ride the bike rather than the bike riding me. And I sort of noticed that you've got a bit of more leg length. Yeah, that helps, I think. Yeah, yeah there's a bit, a bit of leg length going on there. Um, how have you gone today? Have you dropped it at all today? Oh, yeah. Did you? I had a good drop this morning and hurt my rip, but not yeah. in a way that I can't ride. Yeah. So no, that's um, good. Plenty of boys that you can't Yes. Up. Well, this yeah. is the thing. I noticed that after that, I dropped it one more time and I can't actually pick it up anymore <laughs> because of the rip. But I think it's quite convenient. Yeah. I think I might yeah. play that yeah. card for a while. Play it, play it. Yeah, the whole girl thing. I, we're in distress. It sort of works, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. just use it wisely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, awesome bike, awesome guys. Um, awesome some awesome terrain. terrain, so having a wow of a time. Never pass an orange jersey. The leader is an orange jersey. Never pass him. Okay? The sweeps are at the back. When you're at a corner, do not leave the corner. Until out the bitumen to broke, up the putty road through 10 mile. So that's all the 35 kilometer an hour bends. Be very careful, the road may be wet, you're on knobby tyres. We don't want things going to drama. extremely capable bike, um, quite understated. A lot of riders may go for the Enduro race machine, whereas they'd probably be better off on something like this. It's a much easier to live with machine than the Enduro uh, race bikes. So capable that Greg Yeager, the trail boss of Ride ADV, took one across the Simpson Desert. And when he got to the end of the desert, he decided to come back again, which is no mean feat, all on WR250R. Now, when he came back from that trip, he actually said that if he was to go around the world, which is something he's going to plan in the future, this is the bike he'd choose to take around the world. True story. First of all, motor, you've got um, very long service intervals, so 10,000 kilometres and 40,000 kilometres for every valve check. It's got really good suspension, um, so it can cope with all these rocks and stuff we're encountering today. Um, good rims, uh, strong wheels, um, very comfortable to ride and uh, yeah, it's just a good bike to um, just nail these trails up at the Yango Strait Forest. I suppose the good thing about the WR is the motor, that's the best thing, you can really ring it out, you can tap it, hold it pinned and it just keeps going and going. Like these ones.